What's up everyone, it's Liliana. You clicked on the video, you know what it is about. So I run a meetup called Product Design Life in San Francisco and it's where designers get together to hone their craft outside of the 9 to 5 and I've ran whiteboard challenge workshops and unfortunately not everyone can attend so I figured I'll share my fundamentals to you whoever is watching online. I get asked a lot in person or online on how I approach whiteboarding. So I'm going to share with you how I approach whiteboarding and I hope this either gives you more confidence or it gives you some kind of fundamentals to go off. Now keep in mind this is the Silicon Valley way that I'm going to share you. So this is pretty commonly used in product design interviews and product manager interviews. So I'm a product designer myself and I'm going to share with you how I approach them. Keep in mind it's usually an hour so it seems quite daunting. However, throughout the process, I've learned to be a better storyteller, a better communicator, and just overall, even a better seller. So I think what you acquire is not only whiteboarding itself, but you'll acquire how to sell yourself as a designer, how to listen actively, how to think critically on the spot. If you watch till the end, I'll show you the demo of the whiteboarding process I did with one of my workshops. This will help you in your next interview, and you'll be able to at least go in mind knowing what's going to happen or at least have something to practice off of. First and foremost, whiteboarding is showing how you communicate with a client. So you're talking and listening actively while critically thinking on the spot. There are three important parts to keep in mind and this is how I usually try to break it down in my head so I keep a track of time because again there is a cap of one hour. So first around 30 minutes you're trying to understand the problem and then moving on to brainstorming solutions that usually takes around 20 minutes. And finally, you're proposing a solution and this is where you sell and that is usually in the last 10 minutes. A lot of designers have the mistake of jumping right into the solution, but you can't sell something if you don't listen actively to what the client needs. So that is why it, there is such a huge significant part of the time that's put into the process of you understanding what the client needs and wants and then you're able to come up with a solution later. So whiteboarding is really not about the solution you come up with, it's really about the process. The process of how did you take the client from A to B to C to D, and how are you able to finally sell them on the solution. First you have to listen to their problem, then you're able to build a story and show them how you're able to solve their problem. This is why there's a huge part of story selling in design. It's not only is there an element of how they're able to overcome the challenge, you're also selling the solution to your clients. So this is not only in whiteboarding, but it's also in other parts of design. Now what I mean by selling is that you first listen actively to what they're saying and then from understanding their needs and concerns, then you're able to propose the solution that you think will best address their needs and concerns. So that's where there's two parts of it is story and then selling. Selling has kind of like a crummy, feeling that people traditionally think of it as is where you just like sell people things you don't want. But in fact, selling is really about listening and solving the customer's problems. For example, when's the last time you bought an advertisement that didn't speak to your needs as a customer? Well, guess what? The advertisement has been through rounds and rounds of research to understand your needs and pains as a customer. And then they're able to find you and get you to buy their solution. That is essentially what copywriting is. Or you can have a salesman in person or on the phone, they talk to their client and they listen empathetically to what the client needs. Then, after listening and making note of the problems the clients have, they come up with a solution to solve the problem. Usually the interviewer will present a problem to you that's either a macro level, such as the ones I've got, how might we improve transportation, or on a micro level, such as designing a better onboarding flow for users. I've noticed they often like to disguise problems that are similar to their own business problems, and then they'll ask you to solve it in whiteboarding. Remember not to jump in to create a digital product or UI just because you think it's a product interview, unless the interviewer explicitly says so and you confirm with them. You want to keep your solutions open-minded. They want to see how you solve the problem creatively, not just, oh, I'm going to design an app to solve that problem. Mm -mm. Now with that being said, they can present you with multiple open-ended problems and it's up to you as a designer to narrow it down. You as a designer want to take that information and narrow down and build more constraints so along the way you're able to come up with more of a concise solution. And that's part of the design challenge because again everyone is playing make-believe here so there is often not real constraints or even the numbers or just kind of figures that are thrown at you. That's not the focus there. The focus is that they want to see how you're able to navigate 
the complexity or the ambiguity. So jumping into it, the first part is understanding the problem. You start off by asking for the problem and typically as I've interviewed, they usually give you the problem right away. So since I don't have a whiteboard with me right now, I'm gonna use my iPad and write this down. So we're gonna pretend like this is a whiteboard and I'm gonna share with you on the screen and link you. So for example, they tell me the problem and I will write that down. So they'll say, okay, this is the problem we have right now. For example, they might be playing a plant shop owner and they'll say customers keep returning dead plants to store. Now just imagine this is the whiteboard again. Now you don't need to write across the whole entire board. I'm just doing that because as you can see, the dimensionalities of the iPad are kind of small. So the company slash client is a small plant shop owner. And you ask her, what is your customer? And they'll say something like, oh, you know, mostly college students or this demographic. But for this example, we'll use college students as the demographic. The important thing is also to ask how this is affecting their business. Often a lot of designers neglect that. They'll just ask about the users, but then forget to ask about the business. It shows you're more of an involved thinker if you ask for their business. At the end of the day, we're all solving business problems here. And we're all business people before we're designers because, hey, you're a professional before you're a designer. So in this example, the client will say, oh, 20% of generate is lost through refunds. And here is a good time to also ask for what you think their goal is for today. Like what did they want to accomplish by today's session? This can also help you specify if they want like a product and also ask for any constraints. So let's just say for this shop, I ask for their constraints and they say, oh, we're a small shop. So the budget is like $5,000 in three months. So the context is customers come to store, choose, and unbranded plant, and this is the important part, purchase with CC, credit card, or cash, get receipt, and leave. You also know that their company has no website. And you'll notice I'm not drawing any user flows, and there's a reason for that, because when I'm writing down and actively trying to listen to them, it's really hard for me to draw user flows and figure out the diagrams as I'm trying to actively listen to the problems they're saying to me and also think about the next steps of how I want to proceed and guide them throughout the challenge. I personally try to keep it simple and just write it down as much as I can. I'm practically thinking about the next step, always brainstorming solutions. Sometimes the steps are a little complicated, so if you're drawing user flows, you might yourself get confused in the problem. Remember, you're having a conversation with a client, so if you get stuck in your head, it's not gonna be a good flow. To make sure you've gathered all the information, here's a tip. You can ask something like, does this look good? Did I miss anything? And then move on if they agree with you. So this also makes sure that you both are on the same page. Okay, so this is my favorite part, which is brainstorming. So I also ask about their current situation. The client will tell you the story of what's happening right now. So this is essentially kind of like the step-by-step -step walkthrough that a lot of designers have with the client. And I don't generally like to use user flows here because I try to keep it simple and proactively listen to what the client is telling me. So I try to proactively think the next steps and I'm taking in what they're saying right now. And as I'm writing down ideas, I'm explaining to them why it's relevant to their problems or connected to part of the story that they have told me earlier. But if they haven't asked me to do wireframes or any kind of design work, I try to stick to ideas. I'm gonna create a new page, but usually you have a whiteboard big enough to do all of the challenge itself. This is where you sell and you seriously flex your creative thinking skills. After listening to the client, I usually propose like three to five ideas and I only draw wireframes if they ask me to. So write down brainstorming, maybe a water resistant label on the plants because they mentioned earlier that, that the plants were not labeled. So perhaps that's part of the reasons why our customers are returning plants. Second idea may be automatic newsletters, probably email, and letting following up with the customer on how to take care of their specific plant. So this will be done when they purchase the plant. Cashier may like ask them for their email for like 5% discount. And the third one is perhaps they have a website showing how to take care of all the plants. So I'm going to draw a two by two matrix. High cost, low cost. So you notice the high is on the lefts and then the lows are on the rights. Okay, so number one which is water resistant labels. And I think this is pretty effective and impactful because the customer could just see how to take care of the plants right away. 
just by looking at the pot and it comes with every single plant and relatively low cost. So moving on to number two, automatic newsletter. I think this is medium impact because customers still have to give their emails at the time of purchase and not every customer wants to give their email and they can also unsubscribe to emails at any time. So impact is about medium. And in terms of cost, I think it still causes a little bit much because again, this is a small shop owner. They would still have to hire someone who does email marketing to set up automatic emails for them. And MailChimp also has like a monthly subscription fee. So we can say this is like medium to low cost, but in terms of impact, I don't think it's that great. So because high cost is on the left and low cost is on the right, it's like medium or low, I'll put it like a two here, so like on the border. Now number three, a website showing all their plants with instructions how to take care of them. This one is definitely high cost because having a website with a developer or a designer would cost you a pretty buck to build it from scratch. And I'm not sure how much an impact this would make, so probably low because not every single customer is going to look at your website. And if you want a website that people can just find, easily you have to also work in seo so there's a lot of factors that go into creating a website which is basically a product so i'm going to put that as pretty high cost and in terms of impact not that much especially if customers will still need to know how to get access to the website so then the proposed solution can be water resistant labels where every single customer buy the plant on the spot and then take it home with them and know have instructions to know how to take care of the plant without having the plant be sick or dead and return it in the few store. Because customers have access on how to take care of the plants properly, there will be less refunds and returns because every time they purchase a plant, the label is on the plant pot and they're able to see if they ever miss anything or they forget how many days the plant needs to be watered or what kind of nutrition needs. It's like right there in the pot and there's no extra work asked from the customer. So then a storytelling aspect might be stressful environment and something to take care of helps them stabilize this chaotic environment. They may be pretty clueless how to take care of plants because at home their parents took care of the plant. So after the initial joy of taking their plant home, they're dismayed to find that the plant is dying. Not only are they distressed from balancing school and this chaotic new environment they're in, their plant is also dying, so they're going to be in an overly frustrated customer. However, by having a plant that's well nourished and taken care of, that's like growing and pretty and green, there's something that they can return back to home to and be proud of. The plant becomes an essential part of their lives and they may return as happy customers to buy more plants. So win-win because the shop owner may also generate more revenue. So to sum all of this up, in a whiteboard challenge, they want to see how you understand problems and then present your solution to fit their needs. So basically it's how do you actively listen to someone and then be able to understand and empathize the situation and then sell them on the solution. I think I wrapped this pretty concisely and you can watch the full demo video I have linked here on how I did the whiteboarding challenge. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up or if you have learned anything new, please let me know in the comment section. And if you like to see weekly videos of me, 